Part two. They terminate this coach, Coach Mo Carter. I never forget. I never get a chance to even even meet the man. I never got a chance to even meet the man, Coach Carter, Mo Carter, wherever you at today, if you're alive, sir. I want to tell you and your kids, your family, your grandkids, whoever you have left behind, if you're not here, I love you, Mo Carter. God used you. The universe used you. You gave me an opportunity, a young kid from Wichita, Kansas, wanted to play football, wanted to go on to Division One, and you planted that seed and gave me an opportunity and never met this man. What an amazing experience in my life. I get to co to Hutch Juco. We report. There's a new coach called Steve Logan. Steve Logan comes from Oklahoma State. He coached up under Jimmy Johnson. Those who know Jimmy Johnson uh, at Oklahoma State and the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, uh, two Super Bowl wins, I believe. Or was it one? Two. Did Barry got two? I think Barry got two. And, yeah, because Jerry and, and Jimmy fell out. The boys from Arkansas University where I, they went to school with Blue Holtz, the head coach, also recruited me. So I I get there and I show up and we have a team rally, all these players coming in. It's first time me get to see players from other schools that like are talented. Some of them kids came in, they were six seven. Rod Hanks, I'll never forget him. Oh my God. Six five. I mean, when I say he looked like an NFL player, I had to say, you know what? I want to see your driver's license. There ain't no way on the sun that you are 18 years old. 18 year old, and I never don't look like that. I never. I've been around a lot of people, kids, and none of them that I know 18 look like you. You look but a full beard, not a sip, not a not a not an inch of fat, just muscles pounding, pow pow. Block somebody like this, you're a linebacker, a linebacker, mind you, 6'5, 260, 250, whatever he was. I was 220 pounds at the time, 219, 220 pounds in that area. And I see these other players from universities from all over, from all over, big 280s, 290s, 300s. Hurricane seen a nose tackle down that was. 300 pounds, 5 foot 10, couldn't move him, couldn't budge him, we called him Beef. Here come the Beef, where's the Beef? Arnie Milton, the Beef. Like, how am I supposed to move the Beef at 200 pounds and some change and he's 300? It ain't going to happen. I'm going to tell you right now, America, physics, one thing I did learn was physics. And you have to, have to understand physics. If you learn physics... You can do the impossible. The the like, how did he do it? Physics. He understood the chemistry, the just the design and the, the, how it works. And if you do that, you'll win. I promise you. So we we're getting ready to break up, and coach is gonna say, "Go up, you guys. Go to your go to your dorms and your rooms and all that good stuff." And everybody, you know, started taking off and left and. They were leaving, leaving, and I, and I was still standing there, and they were all gone. And soon he realized, like, well, what's going on? What's the problem? I was the only player left. And I said, well, Coach, I'm homeless. I'm homeless. He said, what? I said, yeah, Coach, I'm homeless. They have nowhere to stay. They didn't have money for the dorm. I had offered to have a scholarship. I went on a prayer, a whip of the prayer and the belief. Yes, I did. He was shocked. Being the first head coach as a junior college coach to come in and have the problem like a kid that's homeless, that's unheard of. But I knew that my, my, my if I told my parents, they're gonna say, You give come on back and get your job. Come on back and get your job. That's what that that's what that is. Now so I didn't never told my parents. Never to this day, never told that, kept that from them. One of the assistant coaches, Danny Jones, let me sleep on his couch for two weeks. But me being a knucklehead and Hard head. I love music. I'm blasting music. He's coming home after a hard day, and music is blasted in this house. That's nothing. There's no worse respect, disrespect than that. I couldn't, didn't know that at 18. He put me out. I'm a coach. I'm a homeless. Which, but coach, where am I going? He said, I don't know, but you got to get out of here. Uh, <laughs> and I did. I stepped in my car. You know what I mean? And one day at practice, this 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 guy came over to me. He's he's like eight sixty one. Come over, and I came over to him. He was 
spectator or whatever and he started talking to me and said, you're pretty good. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. And where are you from? Wichita. You know, told me where I'm from, Wichita, Kansas. And he, somehow, the universe, the good Lord had him say, well, where you live? Dun, 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 dun. Where you live? I'm right now in my car. I'm homeless. He said, what? I said, I'm homeless right now. He said, stop playing. I said, no, I'm not playing. I'm homeless. You really homeless? I said, yes, sir. I'm homeless. He couldn't believe it. I mean, you know what I mean? So he said, I'll tell you what. You come work for me. He owned a club. So you come work for me. You work my club. You work my door. This man let me work the door. So I went to school. I went to football practice. And I studied. And I went to, um, I had to go to work. From 8 o'clock to 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock club. Stays late. And I did this, I think it was three times, four times a week maybe. Um, and I finally got me an apartment. $175 a month, my apartment. It was so small, you open the front door up and you trip in the back door to hit you, the back door handle to hit you. I mean, when I say small, I never seen a barber. I never seen, that wasn't even a studio. I mean, the kitchen, the living room, and the bathroom was all in just right here, like right, right here. Just like right here, you can't turn no corners. There wasn't no turn no corners. Oh, no. When the privacy, none of that. Oh, yeah, you come, couple coming to come over. You want to, yeah, yep, 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 I gotta go. <laughs> And then you give me a newspaper and you sit down and, and while the company like, did you just go into the bathroom? Yeah. But I had a place to stay. It was mine, my first apartment. What a great compliment. Went to school, went to practice, gave 100%, and went at night, worked. And this guy took care of me. He went pheasant honey, he brought me pheasant. I love you. I think his name is Jim. I don't remember. God forgive me. I should never forget his name. This man saved my life. He gave me a chance to stay in school. A black kid. This white guy. Big old burly beard white guy. Wherever he at. Oh, I, wanna, I get emotional because this is a real story. I love him. I mean that sincerely. Um, he gave me a chance to, to go to school and, and learn and become a better football player. I Freshman year, I... Well, the coach came to me. See, you got to be coachable because the coach came to me in the beginning of the season in, in two a days, and he said, you're going to be a tight uh, a tackle. And I said, no, coach, I'm not. I'm a tight end. Coach Mo coach me as a tight end. First mistake. First mistake. I wasn't obedient. I wasn't coachable. And he said, okay. Well, you you, you be a tight end, but you'll never get a player down for me. And he, and he cursed, and he walked off. I, you know, I didn't think none of it. I figured I'm, you know, I'm, like I was cocky in high school. I'm get, I'm get through this. I was six, seven straight. <laughs> I held the dummies, but I was the best dummies in them practice squad. They couldn't. I was a menace. And he sat back there with the mirror glasses, and I know he had to see like this kid here is a menace. He's giving us problems all the time. And this went on, this went on, this went on. I knew I was good enough to play. Uh, when I got a chance to to do so, I got a, I, I, uh, the first game. They, I didn't make the practice squad. Fifty players. I didn't make the travel squad. Oh, uh, then this time I wanted to quit. I drove home an hour to talk to my dad. I'm done now. I was crying. I was defeated. I didn't even make the travel squad. How do you make the trap? Don't make the travel squad on the fifty man roster. I don't know what this coach was doing to me. He, he got to me on this one. I said, I'm quitting. My daddy talked me to me again. You're not a quitter, son. So I made this great story in my head. I'm going to go to the coach. I'm going to tell him, hey, I want to play. And I went to the coach that I stayed with. And I said, coach, you got to tell coach I want to play. You see I'm killing him out there. I'm killing him out there. You see that? He said, I'll talk to him. Well, I didn't know how that went. So I had this great story in my mind that when Sunday's uh, team meeting, um, I'm going to tell him how I feel. Let me tell you something. Be on time. The coach says 6 o'clock meeting. That don't mean 5.59. I drove an hour speed. The police could put us over. Me and Daryl Hagen will never get a speed to get back. We got back. It was 5.59. And he had just pulled up. And Coach Logan just pulled up. And he, we get out of the car. He said, you better get your tail. He cursed us. Get your tail in the meeting right now. And we ran. 
Woo! Uh, he taught me a lesson about being late. Don't play with coaches that mean it. They mean it on time. You be 15 minutes early, okay? Don't be jacking around your girlfriend and doing other, smoking a cigarette, doing whatever you're doing. You get your butt to the doggone meeting and you stop playing and you come and be mentally prepared. So I'm in the meeting. I have this great story where I'm going to tell him. And then on the board, he's up there. And he's it's going to be some changes because they got blew out that game by Dodge City. I'll never get it. Blew him out by 30 points. He said, going to be some changes in this game. It was a horrible game. And he was doing stuff. He said, the right tackle, it's going to be Keith Blunt. I almost, number two on myself, I'm Keith Blunt. Okay? I'm Keith Blunt. The man called my name. He called my name. I didn't get that. He saved me from spending all the same thing, story, this this poetry, this 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 letter I wrote up in my head. I want to talk to him about. I didn't never have to reveal that. See, I got work. I worked hard. I gave a hundred percent. He saw it too. He just was mad. He peed off for me because I told him I wanted to play tight end, not tackle. So he had this little thing against me, against me. But I had to re re. Program his mind and thoughts about who I am and what I was. He started me. I was 220, 19 pounds or something like that. Right tackle. And I'm going against 280. I'm going against some real ballers, big boys out of junior college. You call a good junior college for two reasons. Your grades are bad. Two, you need development. A, a division one has sent you down there. Uh, division two sent you junior college to get you can develop your skills or get your grades up. Period. That's just simple. My grades were cool. I'm in, 200 pound right tackle that just don't work okay i got i i, I, I have heart so I, I i played i did very well at that weight but there was one game frank lala you remember you you get what you remember his name frank lala this is 40 years ago i remember frank lala tight end cali county and my buddy from North High, Arthur Orange, my buddy, he played defensive back. So he he got the, he was on the defensive side with this Lala kid. This kid whooped me like you know, never want to get whooped. It was raining that day. So my cleats, they didn't stick. And he had me like a rag doll. He threw me left. He threw me right. The, we had to, the coach had to change the whole offensive design plays. The, the run away from this man monster who he beat me. And I know he beat me. And there was nothing I could do. He had he was 260 pounds, 270. And he, he picked me up. He just threw me around like I was nothing. I know I got hard. You can't do me like that. But well, he did. He did. Guess what? The coach came to me on film day and said, son, you really had a hard game. I'm not going to not gonna watch that film. You don't got to watch that film. I got to watch it for the rest of my life in my head. I still remember him picking me up. I was on skates. I was skating backwards like I was a, a, a professional skater. Dancing. He was, I, was, I was dancing on skates. <laughs> yeah, he whooped me. He, he humiliated me. But you know what? In the offseason, Coach created this. He said, he told me, he said, son, he came to me and said, you're built like this now. You got no chest. You're built like a triangle. He said, when I get through with you, son, you're going to be built like this. Like, with small waist and big chest. And I looked at that. This man crazy. We did his program. The drag is 1,500 squats, 1,500 squat throws, 1,500 setups, 1,500 push-ups. After workout days on Mondays, Wednesday and Friday. Tuesday and Thursday, we ran 50, 40 yard dash. 50, I said, 50. I said, this man is crazy. It's a 500 club. You get this shirt, blue shirt when you get the 500 clubs, when you can do all of them. 500 sets, 500 thrusts, squat thrusts, squat, 500 push -ups. All in one setting. There ain't no take a break or nothing. We're talking about all in one. It took me a moment. It, I, he took, he turned, he burnt all the fat off of me. Coach Logan burned all the fat. He turned me like this. I literally my arms started getting big. I was like, "Oh my God, my chest!" I ended up getting a blue shirt. Getting I got the blue called Blue Dragons Club. Blue Dragons Club. I got it, baby. And, and, and the quarterback uh, who got there quickly, uh, four one ankles, no no lower body, all upper body. Greg Petty, the fastest wide kid out of Miami. He went and got the Miami players where they run like deers. They run like Tyreek Hill in the, in the Miami Dolphins right now. They go get them in Florida. That when they got him, amazing, amazing player. He came in my corner and he helped me after he got the shirt obtained the five hundred. He, he believed in me. He helped me. And I love him to this day. We still talk about it. Like 
I give him credit for coming to my corner, coming over there with me and getting me through this. Doing after he did his, he would do him with my doing with me. So um what I'm saying is that you, you never give up, you give a hundred percent. The off season, the scouts are coming in. I'm up to about two forty. Ooh, two forty, y'all. About two forty, two fifty, somewhere in that area. Oh, the kid from Kansas, from Wichita, he's up to the We never been there, seen no weights like this. But my bench strength and my strength and all that is still on the bench. It was very not comparable to some of these other guys. They were putting up three hundred, but I had pure talent. That's the greatest thing about me. I had talent, so it all it offset things a little bit to make things even out a little bit um but i was running the scouts the big eight ku k-state they come in to watch us that day on a tuesday and i never forget this day because i come out the blocks i'm gonna run a four nine i mean i was running five threes slow because logan turned me into a, a madman running madman lineman that could run i could run and i never forget that i come out the Come out there. My buddy was just telling me the other day, this was 40 years ago. I come out there, boom, 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 out the, out the, for the 40 run, boom, eh, and I hit a hole. And you can hear a pow, like a gunshot. I, I don't know where the gunshot came from, but I heard it to this day. I still hear it. I rewind it, pow. And me yelling, ah, and I hit the ground. They all hear it. They still remember it too. We all heard that pop. I heard the pop, but I didn't know who pop that was. I didn't have no pop like that. My knee blew up entirely, blew my knee up. I said, oh, Lord. I hope I'm not a serious injury. It was big, about this big, knee about that big, blew my whole legs, whoa, about that big. I told Coach, and he sent me to the locker room to trains put ice on it. And he said, Blunt, you're the starting right tackle next year. We need you. Okay, Coach, so we tapped this bad, wrapped this bad boy. We wrapped it up. It was the most excruciating pain I went through the first two weeks without going to the doctor, not knowing I had blew my knee up. I knew something was wrong because I had to, two, three weeks, the pain started going down a little bit. I could start walking. The body's really amazing. It will re recover itself. It may not can do the same things it can do because the ligaments and stuff are gone. So when I keep when I was walking, I stopped. My knee keep going because there were no more ligaments. And I went to him and said, Coach, I think something wrong with my knee. Went to the doctor. The doctor said, son, are you crazy? Your, your ligaments are spaghetti. Huh? Why'd you wait so long? Well, I told you the story. But mentally... I was like, I'm the starter. I'm not going to do nothing. The coach believes in me now. It doesn't matter what's going on. I'm going to be ready. I'm going to be ready to play next year. And that was my mentality. Well, I had to get knee surgery. Yeah, so they put me out. Used my red shirt year, my uh, freshman year. Yeah. And I was alone. Because the team, you're not part of the team when we have an injury. You're, you're the sidekick. <laughs> Just a guy hanging around. <laughs> You're useless, baby. Useless. Nothing you can do to help the team entirely. No matter how good you are, Tom Brady, blowing up, blowing up knee, whatever, you can't help the team as great as he is. So I get the knee repaired. I come back. I started healing and working out a little bit. And then I had a couple of guys. And this coach happens to be the head coach of uh, El Paso University, El, 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 El Paso University in El Paso, Texas, Division One school. Man, I won't say his name. He's the head coach, but it was him and his, it was Cappy and his other guy. And I knew that they were in the gym. And they were getting lifting up heavier weights. I'm like, how are you stronger than me? I said, wait a minute, how Cappy lifting more than me? Cappy don't even play. He's all just a big fat slob. But I started to see the bodies, their, their anatomy changing and Dana Demo blew up. It, we got started blowing up and started benching 400 and I said, y'all own something. I said, y'all own something so I went to him that day. I'll never forget that and I don't recommend anybody ever do this. Please kids. You think you're all natural. And I went to these players and I said, I'm going to tell coach if you don't give me some of what you got and this is how this went down. I said, I know y'all own something. I'm going to go tell them y'all own something. And they, that scared them. <laughs> we're 18, 19-year-old kids. And they told me what they were on. I said, well, I want some of that. I want that dining ball, testosterone from an ape. Ape hormones, you know what gorilla hormones, the strength of a gorilla. I started taking it. My uh, 
kids, my mother, my daughters, she was an RN, so she, you know, medical, I had a medical nurse, so she was shooting me in the butt, give me them butt shots and stuff, I was in the butt shot, I started blowing up, my pants started going up, my, the beef, the beef from the floor, he said, you on something, cause I know I ain't on nothing, I ain't on nothing, I ain't on nothing, he saw me lift that weight in the gym, he knew that I was going to wear that, I wasn't that strong. See, you on something. He had lost weight, and then I started getting, I got to about 280. Oh, 280. I became an animal. I became a monster with 4'9 speed. I'm getting excited now because the game of football requires that you be physically intact to play the game and play line up every doggone play. Line up where your fingers are broke. You got a broke hand. Your wrist is cracked. Your, whatever it is, you, you got to go. You see my eyeballs, y'all? You got to go, and it's a real story. You got to go. So I came back that year, and I destroyed. I, 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 and along the way, I thought about that player that destroyed me my freshman year, and I knew that I was going to get him. And there was also a player the first year that played in the NFL. He came back uh, for the alumni game. He was six, six, five, six, six, played in the NFL, and he destroyed. I was, I was, he destroyed everybody. <laughs> I was he went through the first, second day that I, I didn't play. He remember I was on the bench. I was seven string. He, he put me in there. He went through me. He went through me like he went through them. This dude, well, I forget his name, but he was an NFL demons lineman and, and he brought the pain, okay? And so when I came back I was 280, I had him the NFL player, and I had number uh, Frank Lawler in my mind. I'm going to destroy them at 280. I feel like I could destroy anything. I didn't get the chance to. Actually, I did get to play with against the, uh, the NFL player in the in next season. I tore him up. I wore him out. I wore him out. Wore him out. I didn't get a chance to play against Frank Lawler because I blew my knee up. The next year he was a senior, so he was gone. He was gone that year that I blew my knee up that set out. So I didn't get a chance to wear him out, but I was going to break you in half. If you ever see this video, I won't break you off on my everything I love on life. You, if you knew the training that I put in, I'm going to wear you out. I was 280. I was became a monster. I became a nasty monster. I became the most dirtiest player in the league. The coach was talking about me. I was played to the whistle start with the whistle ball snap and the whistle in. I didn't care. I played sideline to sideline, and I was an animal. I was noted as one of the dirtiest uh, players in the league, and I I did some things that I I, I I I I never thought I would ever do. Number one, but when you want to win, you want to win at all costs. You will take gambles and you'll take gambles that you never thought you would. Yeah. So I happened to watch the that year. Uh, first round pick uh, for the Boston Celtics. You can Google him. Lynn Bias. He OD'd on cocaine. And I so happened to watch that um, the story on him the night before the draft. He'd already been selected. All he had to do was get up the next morning and go, he was going to be an instant millionaire. He OD'd that night. But what got me was this, the clip they showed on how he was donking out of Maryland and how he was his intensity, and, and, and I knew it had to be the cocaine. I thought, that's a handsome drug like steroids was. I said, I want some of that. I want some of that. I'm going to win at, a cost, at all costs. And fellas, kids, please, ever, please, 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 don't do it. You would die nowadays. Nowadays, they got fentanyl and all these other things they're doing. You touch that cocaine, you're going to die. I'm telling you right now, you want to commit suicide, you, 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 you want to die a gun, you want to just go into convulsions and, and pass away, you can do that. Okay, I'm telling you, I experiment with speed because I wanted it to enhance me. And never forget, Coach Logan brings me in the Flint film room and he shows me the film against Garden City. I never forget it. And he says, if you, he says, Blunt. If you're going to go on to Division One football, you got to get through this game. These two players, they were one was 6'8", 365. The other one was 6'10", 385. I said, oh, my God. Then when I started doubting myself, like 6'10", 6'8". And when I seen them, I said, oh, Lord, have mercy. So I took three black beauties in before the game. 
coaches never knew. I, not knowing what drugs can kill you, it didn't kick in. I never took speed before my life. Cocaine never did none of that stuff. But that speed kicked in. It, at halftime we went in, I, I was speeding and didn't know because I didn't know what the feeling of what speed does. But I was speeding in. It, it was kicked in, so I took three more black beauties. If you Google black beauties, them things are more powerful. I took a total of six of them. So I, by, by the third quarter, I was off the chain. I put both of those players out that game. They said, you were one of the greatest players we ever we ever had. I got a player of the game that game. I sure did. I absolutely rocked it from field, from sideline to sideline. Every play, I was I was enhanced. I was OD and didn't even know I was OD and while I was playing by the fourth quarter. I was OD. After the game, we went to eat snacks and I love cookies and stuff like that. I know I couldn't eat nothing that stuff. My appetite was there. So I was going to drive home 45 minutes away to go home. I didn't want, I wanted to go home because I knew that I was, I need, I, this, I need to get away. Down the highway, I began to OD. Yeah. Throwing up, dry heaving, going through all this stuff. I didn't know what that stuff was. I never experienced that stuff. I don't know what all no Dean and none of that stuff was. But my mind mentally was, is a strong mind. Because we, we rewind a little bit in the surgery, in the knee surgery, in, on the operating table, I woke up. I seen my knee open, the clamps and everything. And I said, my mind playing trick. No, I know I woked up. So I asked my my mother, Mama, did I wake up? She said, yes, son. I asked Dr. Kaufman who did it. I said, Doctor, did I wake up? She said, yeah, you did. That's pretty remarkable. You woke up under that drug that killed Michael Jackson. Proof of law. I was on that drug right there. So my mind is strong. So I'm in my mind. I got to get home. I got to stay put. I got to stay strong. The door is open. I'm doing 50, 60 by then. My speed was 55 by an hour. My door is wide open. I'm throwing up. I'm throwing up. I'm throwing up. I'm throwing up. I'm ODing and not knowing it. And I, I refused to go to sleep that night because I thought I was going to die. I got home. And I got to the top of the stair. And I, my muscles froze up in my body. I started crying. And my daddy got up. He came to. Him, I said, "Daddy, I'm, I can't move. I can't move my legs. I got cramps." And I laid forward on the top of that stairs. Look, I didn't go twenty steps down and stumble and plummet to, to the, break my neck, fall backwards, whatever. I cramped up. It was over. And he massaged my legs and got him, got him, and I got him, got him back where I was comfortable. And I wanted to tell him, Dad, I need to go to my emergency room. But I couldn't tell him I do no drugs. My daddy, no, 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 no. Never, if never, never. But I stayed up all night that night because I feared that if I went to sleep, I wouldn't wake up. Kids, don't be a fool. Do not undertake in anything that I've said today. I'm, I'm telling you, don't do it. Today is a different time. And people are for profit, not pleasure. And when people spoke, hey, make sure people have right pleasure. They're about the money. So you, you take some poison, it's going to kill you. You know, you might not get the opportunity to tell your story like I am. So I went on to become a first team all conference, voted by the coaches, <laughs> player of the year, offensive player of the year that year, recruited by some of the greatest coaches, Coach Aaron's the uh, head coach at Temple University. I want to say thank you for flying me into Temple University. If y'all don't know who Coach Aaron's is, you might want to Google him. He went on to coach Tom Brady with the Tampa Bay. He became a Tampa Bay Super Bowl cha cha champion, Super Bowl winner just a few years back. He recruited me out of junior college. He felt that I was the one to come right in to replace John Reinster. Look up his, he was a first round pick to the Steelers, multi-million dollar guy. They brought me in to take his place. Can I tell you something? I got to meet Dr. J. Even Dr. J, when I told him at the hotel, I met the Hershey, he was like, oh, my God. So they must really want you. I get to meet Mike Smith, the greatest. Uh, uh, I didn't get to meet Mike Smith. I got to go to his locker room in the Phillies in the offseason. He was gone in his locker, set his locker, and had to put his glove on. I wanted to steal his glove, but the, I said, that wouldn't be right. like somebody taking my cleats. He needs it. He's used to this. His, his glove, it fits him. That's a no-no. Mike Smith. 
I almost told you glove. I love you and I honored you and I just respect you. I got to go meet the uh, 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 the veteran stadium where the Eagles were. Got to meet all the coaches and this new group coming in. They was I didn't realize how substantial it, uh, it was at that time. It was it was a risk. I was I was had opportunity to change my whole life in the future to come and didn't really realize it. Um, Holtz, Arkansas, you know. OU, uh, Syracuse, uh, TCU, uh, Kansas, uh, offers at K-State, uh, took a visit to K-State, uh, turned down most of the schools that I decided I want to go to Wichita State. But this kid that never played in high school, got dogged out and never quit it, stayed in there, still be a team player, still proved the whole team, no matter what I'm going through. I'm getting having a bad situation. I'll bring a bad attitude to any of my other teammates. He's like, you, I wouldn't be cheerleading like you, you know, but that's who I am. I'm here to share my story. The real story of Byron Keith Bo Blunt, a.k.a. Bubba Blunt, as the announcers called me on ESPN. Well, we got to watch it 20 years later. Bubba Blunt, that's not Bubba in my name. <laughs> White people, it's never, it's not Bubba, it's Bobo. It's actually with Bobo Blunt. They call me Bubba Blunt. <laughs> but it's all good. Um, no matter what you're going through with your coach, you give him 100%. Barry Sanders wrote the bench. He wrote the bench. The same coach that coached me, Coach Barry Sanders. Hello. Barry wrote the bench. Barry got a shot because Lamont Parker, the guy ahead of him, his brother and I played together, broke his hand. And Barry got a chance to come in. God got it. When God got his hand on you, can't nobody touch your blessing. When you first want to pour it out, they're going to pour it out. I encourage everybody out there that sees this, see this video and watch it. No matter what you're going through, you turn up. I became a workout madman. I worked out. I was under that en en enhancement drug, and I just be turned up, became an animal and knocked anybody out, ran over you. I didn't care. I love a contact. I love hitting you as hard as I can not try to hit you to knock myself out because I, I know that I got you then for sure. But it was that on that level. So never give up, never quit. And it's just a pleasure um, having the opportunity to then go on and be a, a sports agent and recruit college players and speak into them lie, to, into their lives and give them the opportunity. Why I told Barry why he needed to let go to the NFL that day. And he threw his hands in the air. And I got in my car and drove home. The phone rang that night with Barry Sands ready to talk. That's part of the story of how Barry was ready to go into the NFL. I was glad to play my part in that situation. Um, and all the other players that I've had a chance to work with and recruit. Mitchell Benson, second, third round pick. Stanley Petrie, love you, Petey, wherever you at. Speedy, Petey, 4-3 speed. We call him 4-3-9 speed. Kansas City, fourth round pick. We love you, Petey, wherever you at. All these players and all the players that I've helped. Elijah Alexander, um, who I represented, and he went to Tampa Bay, passed away at 38 of rare disease. Um, and I saw that he probably wouldn't live to be past 40 because his father passed away when I signed him that day out of K-State linebacker, 42-inch vertical. He broke Barry Sanders' NFL combine vertical. Elijah Alexander, linebacker, 6'2 and a half, 230, 238, could jump like Michael Jordan with that weight. Yeah. I remember him being a 10th round pick to Tampa. We thought we'd go higher. We didn't. And Shannon Sharp, y'all see him on there. They're, they're, they're all hanging out together. You know, and Shannon asked, out of, out of Savannah State, I think he was at it. How did you agent get you a deal with Reebok and you got drafted behind me. I picked up the phone, called Reebok one day and said, hey Reebok, how you doing? My name is uh, such and such and such and such. I represent, I got a player that's got a 42 inch vertical jump. He has an NFL combine. He jumps out of his shoes. Now, I can call uh, Nike, but I thought I won't call you and brand differently with you. And I said to him, imagine this, it's fourth down. It's uh, a field goal. And all you see is this guy rising, rising, rising. 
rising, and then all you see is the shoes. You just see his shoes. Now, do you want him to say Reebok or do you want him to say Nike? He blocks the punt. He picks the punt up and he runs down in for an 80 yard touchdown. Because we had that in the negotiating the backside of his contract, that incentive, as we call it, backside of the contract. Yeah. If he do this, he get this, he get this amount of money, meeting the, uh, certain uh, goals. Do you want that to be uh, the fax was I couldn't even get out the phone good. The fax machine went off. The contract for Reebok was it wasn't big, very big deal, but it was a six figure six figure deal. I got the guy a six figure deal because I picked the phone up and I called and I visualized the gift that God had given me to jump out to jump to the moon. So I'm available to be booked. I will come to your school. I will talk to you at banquets sport events, whatever. Corporate America insurance events, get your players excited, really pour into them and tell them the do's and don'ts. I got the football side of it, then I got the insurance side of it now. I do business insurance, so and I want to represent players and give them, provide them with um, insurance to protect their anatomy in the event that they get hurt if they're high-profile players, especially with the NIL deals. These kids are getting tremendous money. Um, that's what I do, Blunt Insurance Group, www.bluntinsurancegroup.com. My name is Byron Keith Bobo Blunt. I played at Wichita State. I was one of the nastiest players you ever met, ever want to meet, and played the game to kill you. Be obedient, be coachable, and you'll win. Thank you.